Hello everyone. This video is going to start us on the um, getting to learn about scatter plots and having more than two dimensions of the data shown in one visualization, as we saw example of them in the Gapminder website. And we will start like you know with the 2D, and then we talk about the scatter plots, and we we work our way up to 4D in this video. And in the next video, we'll see an example of the 5D scatter plots and how they can be useful for uh, data analytics through visualizations. So let's get to it. So as always, we import our um, the modules that we we want to use first, and then we uh, read our data. And this is the data we've already gotten to know through the uh, previous video. So to create a 2D visual, uh, for example, we want to see the visuals of babies per woman and age five surviving for the years 1995. The first thing we do, we sort of use a Boolean mask to just keep those data of just that one specific year. And then we use the Boolean mask to um, filter out the, the, the data that we only want. And then we say babies per woman or age surviving. CPLT.scatter, this is the um, matplotlib module. Uh, this is gonna work. But also another way you can go about this is directly getting access to matplotlib visuals through pandas uh, by saying dfbm.plot.scatter. It is getting direct access from, from module pandas to the visuals of matplotlib. So once I run these two, I will get the very same visual. There are a little bit of differences, you know, the size and the way that the visual might be behaving because the scatter might have some, the functioning scatter might have some um, change in the default of matplotlib. But basically they will both work uh, in the same way. Um, scatter plots are great too to see the relationship or interactions of two attributes in the population of your data frame, your data set. So here we can see that there is a relationship between um, the babies per woman and age five surviving. The more babies per woman, the more we have babies per woman basically. Um, we have less H5 survival. So that's sort of like the, in a negative uh, interactions or relationship or correlation between these two attributes. So let's go ahead and add one dimension to this visual. We want to add the dimension of time. Before we start doing that, let's create a function that will spit out um, this uh, visual or this scatter plot based on different years. So it's gonna like do the same thing, but we are making that year as an input to the function. So the year is an input, whatever the year is, we use that to create a Boolean mask and the rest of it is going to be the same. So I create this function. Now, depending on the year that I change here, I will get that visual for that specific year. And it's very useful because now I can import another module um, to Jupyter Notebook, IP widgets that has interact and also widgets that I can use to create um, or add the dimension of time to my scatter plot. So basically the function or module interact will allow you to create a widget that you can change um, a function working by that widget that you have. So I'm passing the first thing, I'm passing the function and then for the year I am saying that widgets dot in slider. So basically create that in slider and I'm saying the minimum and the maximum and the step and the default value of that slider. So once I run this, now I see that uh, the function has been run for the default and it's being shown here. And I'm also have access 
to run the function based on different these all of these values so once i change this basically the function is run for all of those things so now i can sort of like have that interaction that i had in um, gapminder website i can like um, change the time and the visual changes itself one thing that you might be seeing here is the fact that once i'm changing this the x and y axes are changing so next step i want to make sure that x and y axes are fixed so i if inside my function i just pass the x and y's that are um, universal for this um, data so it means that all of the points are going to be shown throughout different years by this um, mix and man, mix man and mix men and max that i'm using for x and y so once i run this now i have a much better interactive because the x and y's are are stationary or like they're constant so i can actually see the changes in the world uh, based on the non percent of the children alive after at, at five and babies per woman you can see that the um, relationship between these two values doesn't change it's still we can see uh, throughout the year the less babies women have the higher the survival of the uh, children so we see that um, relationship still persist but um, there are more and more success in the world at reaching a stage that um, babies at five um, are surviving and that's a significant achievement in the history of um, human and the, in the world so let's add another dimension the next dimension we want to add is we want to also be able to see the size of population uh, for each of these countries so in this chart each of these markers are showing a country so we want to also now be able to see the population of each country in this visual uh, so we add this fourth dimension by using size uh, of these uh, markers to add a value that is relevant or um, it is um, commensurate to the population size and this relative um, comparison can help us see if the size of the population is meaningful for this interactions that we are seeing here to do that uh, you will have to just add um, a couple of things to your code so first thing you will have to add is uh, to create an array that is based on the area so you create an array based on the population and then you pass that to um, s which is the size of these markers for your scatter plots uh, let me go ahead and remove some of these first and then i'll put them back on so once i run this now i see the size of population is also um shown here but because there are no um, edges or there are no uh, lines showing the boundaries of these lines uh, it's sort of like not um, showing it itself so that's why i had added uh, the edge color and also the line width for uh, these um, edges to be shown so once i run this now now i can see the boundaries of each country and now once i slide this I also have the information about the population of um, each country when I see these development and there doesn't seem to be a correlation between the population and these level of improvements uh, in different countries but again um, it's not really a good way for us to find patterns because um, we are limited in our comprehension uh, after we move from uh, 2d to 3d and 4d we cannot really rely on the way we are um, detecting or not detecting things unless the pattern is obvious it's glaring at us we might not be able to find the patterns so 
For your challenge, there are a couple of questions here. Stop this video and try to answer these questions and come back as I will be answering them. So the best way to answer these questions is actually change the code and see what we are seeing. So let me first um, remove this sorting part and see what, what would change. And that's just going to uh, give us the answer we are looking for. So if I were to remove this sorting and I run this, now if I move this along, there are some country that doesn't actually work because I have to uh, reread the data because the sorting was uh, taking place already. So you can see some of the smaller values are behind um, countries with smaller uh, population are behind the other countries. And that's sort of, see if this, this one that moves, it's not letting other countries be shown. So what I've done, I have sorted the countries um, descendingly. So based on the population, so now all of the bigger population countries are sitting in the back. So the smaller one can show themselves. And that just does the trick. And you can see that now, because of that, all of the countries have the chance to be seen because the bigger countries are pushed back uh, in the visual. The second question is, why did you multiply per population by this small number? Um, so let's not do it. See what will happen. Um, so if I don't do it, once I run this, I see all these big values that um, are not really showing me anything. So Really what I did, I did some trial and error and find a value that if I multiply, bring the size of the countries or the size of these uh, markets proportionately to a size that will show the uh, relevant, the, the uh, differences between uh, each country, but also at the same time, it's still manageable. I can put that in this uh, size or visual that they want to see. So that's how I really went about it. I just like did try and error to find the uh, appropriate value. So if you change this, make it bigger or smaller, you will see that, uh, for example, if I change this a little bit bigger, you will see that it's still not working. If I make it, you know, way too smaller, you will see that I will lose that comparison. So you have to like find that value that uh, really worked for you. And that's, this seems to be a good one. And the last question, um, how come we really, how are we doing this? How are we like adding the size to each population, to each marker? Let's go ahead and uh, print area here. Once you, so, it's inside that function, it's not really running. So let's print the area here. Let's say it's 2015. So you can see per each data row, now you have a number. And what happens in this visual, when you pass a array has an array that has as many uh, rows as the data frame it will assume a one to one relationship between the size um, between the array and the data frame so basically it will match for each data point um, that size and that how it works so let's talk about the second challenge the second challenge i want you to really change um, the uh, visual, but just a small change. I want you to use GDP per capita 
instead of the population. It's a very simple challenge actually. All you need to do, you need to change, um, you need to change uh, the population to GDP per capita. But pay attention that you may have to find a new multiplier to find that relative um, largeness that works for this visual. So give this a try um, and come back see how, how I have that. As I said, I, I, all you really need to change here is change the population to GDP per capita. But if I run this, I will see that the values are, the sizes are too small. And because of that, it's just not showing anything to me. So uh, a good number that you will find is going to be uh, this number. So once I run this, now we'll have a much better um, sizes that has meaningful um, way of comparison to for each of these data points. So if I, run, if I move this along now, I will see that uh, Unlike the um, unlike the population that did not have a relationship uh, in the interaction between the percent of children alive at five and babies per woman, I can see countries with relative large GDP were more successful, and we can also we can sort of see that interaction here. And of course, it says, again, it's subject to us being human and not being able to see everything or detect all the patterns. But this is something that we might suspect that is happening here by looking at this visual.